Hey, fourth graders, Mrs. Lawson here. I just wanted to ask you guys, have you ever felt an earthquake before? I know when I first moved to Topeka, I felt an earthquake and it was pretty scary. I was just sleeping and the next thing I know, my bed was shaking. I thought somebody was messing with me and then it was done and it went by really fast, um, but it was actually from an earthquake all the way in Oklahoma. I could feel it all the way here in Topeka, Kansas. So I was just curious if any of you fourth graders had felt an earthquake before or knew a lot about them. Well, let's go ahead and get started and keep learning about earthquakes today. We are starting lesson four, and today we are really focusing on comparing and contrasting details and examples to better understand a text. We know we are successful when we can find similarities between two concepts in the text, find differences between the two concepts in the text, and refer back to details. And I found these um, statistics from this year because I thought they were pretty interesting. In the year 2020, there were eight quakes of a magnitude of 7.0 or above. There were 115 quakes between 6.0 and 7.0. There were 1,684 quakes between a 5.0 and a 6.0, 12,646 quakes between a 4.0 and a 5.0, 38,671 quakes between a 3.0 and a 4.0, 84,509 quakes between a 2.0 and a 3.0, and there were also 205,798 quakes below a magnitude of 2.0, which means we don't normally feel it. So we don't have a ton this year that were huge earthquakes, but my goodness, guys, do you see those huge numbers of all of the smaller earthquakes that happen every year? It's pretty crazy stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep looking at these multi-meaning or multiple meaning words. So today we have two words or two meanings for the word ground. And I know the Earth's surface is the ground, right? We walk on it every day. But Mrs. Lawson loves her coffee, and they grind it into grounds. Have you ever seen this before? Some good stuff. But it means you, you reduce it to a small particle. So in this sentence, let's figure out which meaning of ground is it. Is it one or two? The Mercalli intensity scale uses observations of the earthquake damage to rate it on a scale ranging from one, where the effects are scarcely noticeable, to a, guys, have you ever seen these before? What's this XXI all about? Anybody know? Well, if you've never dealt with it before, this X actually stands for a 10. So we've got two 10s and a one. So it's actually 21. So to 21, where damage is total and the ground heaves in waves. So guys, it says up here, which one is ground right here? The ground weaves, is it the earth's surface or is it small particles? Yep, must be got it. It's number one, it's the earth's surface, good job. What about this word? What is this word? Yeah, it's float. And there are two different meanings for the word float. It's a moving exhibit or to rest on the surface of something. So let's see, which one do you guys think this means? In swim class, I learned to float on my back in the water. Which one's that? Is it one or two? In swim class, I learned to float on my back in the water. It's number two, good job guys. What about this one? I rode on a float in the 4th of July parade. Good job guys, it's number one. It's one of those moving exhibits. They were in a parade, so they were on a float or a moving exhibit. Great job. So again, you have a text to read today and it's called Biking for a Cause. So some of your multiple meaning words we have, oop, here's that first word, cause. What about this word? Drew, and this last one, right, right. So, while Miss Stein's class was completing a unit on current events, they read about a recent earthquake and the terrible damage it had caused. It had left tens of thousands of people homeless. 
the class had a big discussion about how they could help the people there. So you're gonna read all about how can they help these homeless people that lost their homes from the earthquake. So some vocabulary for today, we have this fancy word. Does anyone, can anyone sound it out, figure it out? It's a seismograph. It's a seismograph. So scientific instruments that measure earthquakes shocks. So it's making lines and this is what it looks like. It's got a spring, a weight, pretty interesting there. And then here's another word. Can you sound that out? So magnitude is, refers to the amount of energy an earthquake releases. So the number of earthquakes per year and then the seismic wave energy in earthquakes. So it kind of shows us how much energy it's releasing and that's how they figure out the magnitude of the earthquake. Then this other vocabulary word is one of the concepts we're gonna be comparing and contrasting today. This is the Richter scale. It's a measuring system used to classify the strength of an earthquake. So if it's a zero, it's non-existent, there is no earthquake. But then if we have a one, it's minor, someone felt something and it gets stronger and stronger all the way up to a 10. Then some by the way words, there's registers, which is a list or a record of events, and then immense, vast, huge, or big, like this immense wave right here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into reading. How do you measure and compare the size of earthquakes? The size cannot be judged solely by the damage to buildings or the number of people killed. That's because a medium earthquake close to a large city Will cause more destruction than will a larger earthquake in an unpopulated area. Seismographs are the instruments that scientists use to measure earthquake shocks. Modern seismographs record their data to a computer and are able to detect a tiny earth tremor thousands of miles away. Seismologists, I'm not sure how to say this guy's name, um, Jan of Germany's Ge Geoscientific Research Institute points to the shock waves that were recorded in blue in this digital graph on the right. So let's look at the next page. So he's pointing, here's this guy, he's pointing at the waves in blue. And it says, on March 28, 2005, earthquake off the island of Sumatra. There are hundreds of seismographic stations all over the world that time the arrival of earthquake waves. Scientists use the measurements to find an earthquake's timing, magnitude, and location, latitude, longitude, and depth. So again, here's that picture of him looking at those blue lines. And then right here it says, what does the text say about the Richter scale? So what are we learning? Scientists use the Richter scale to measure an earthquake's magnitude, so the amount of energy it releases. Each number on the Richter scale stands for an earthquake that is 10 times more powerful than the number below it. You would hardly notice a magnitude two earthquake, but a magnitude three earthquake is 10 times greater and easily felt by everyone. The scale has no upper end, but any earthquake that registers six or more is considered a major earthquake. The earthquake off the island of Sumatra on December 26, 2004, registered a 9.0 magnitude and caused a huge earthquake formed, ooh, and caused huge earthquake formed sea waves called tsunamis. The enormous earthquake and tsunami waves killed more than 200,000 people and caused immense destruction in several countries. So what did we learn about the Richter scale on this page? Pause your video and see what you can find. So the main thing about the Richter scale is all they are measuring is the magnitude or the amount of energy it releases. So that is what they focus on with the Richter scale. And we have another picture of the earthquake. It destroyed all of this, but this bathroom is still standing. Crazy. 
There's another sign of the destruction and these buildings are standing, but this is completely destroyed. Scientists use observations as well as instruments to measure the effects of an earthquake. The Mercalli intensity scale uses observations of the earthquake damage to rate it on a scale ranging from one, where the effects are scarcely noticeable, to, oh, I, I knew that was weird earlier, I typed it wrong. So it's not two X's, it's only one. So it's 12, noticeable to 12, where damage is total and the ground, and the ground heaves in waves. Usually the intensity is greatest near the center of the earthquake and smaller further away from the center. But other factors such as the soil in the area and the construction of the buildings are also important. For example, the earthquake that shook the San Francisco area in October 1989 during the World Series measured a 7.1 on the Richter scale. On the Mercalli scale, it measured a 10 to 11 in the Marina District, shown here, where the houses are built on loose soil. So this picture that we just looked at, this is in the Marina District. So in that area, it was a 10 to 11, where the houses are built on loose soil, but only a 6 to 7 in other parts of the city, where the houses suffered much less damage. So I wonder why in some areas, the earthquake didn't hurt as much as in other areas. Thinking about that fourth graders. So how do scientists measure and compare earthquakes? What did we learn today about that? Pause that video and let's think, how do they measure and compare them? And if you're stuck, let's go ahead and look back and see what we can find. So it says here, well, how do they measure and compare them? That's what we're answering right here. So they can't just measure in one way is what we learned. The big thing we learned is that a seismograph is the instrument that they use to measure the earthquake shock. And then the, seismo, the seismologists work all over the world to try and see where the earthquakes are happening. Then we also learned about the Richter scale, which is measuring what? What was it that we talked about? The amount of energy the earthquake releases. Good job. But then what about that Mercalli scale that we just figured out? What are they focused on right here? The Mercalli intensity scale uses observations of the earthquake's damage to rate it. So they're not focused on the power of it. They're focused on what did it damage or destroy. So there's lots of ways to measure an earthquake. So scientists, science writers point out similarities and differences by comparing and contrasting natural events or phenomena. Good readers reread key words and sentences in the text to better understand the author's choices and how they shape meaning. So today we've already started looking back on some of those key details and key points. So what did they say on this page about the Richter scale? We already kind of talked about that together, right? It says the Richter scale is used to measure an earthquake's magnitude. And the Richter scale goes, stands for an earthquake that is 10 times more powerful. So every time you go up, it's 10 times bigger than the one under it. Now, what do we learn about the Mercalli scale or the Mercalli scale that we just learned about? kind of repeating what we just said, right? The Mercalli intensity scale uses observations of the earthquake's damage. So you have the same exact earthquake, right? Down here, it says it was a 7.1 on the Richter scale. There's one score on the Richter scale because that's the energy it released. But then when we look at the Mercalli scale, we have two different scores that they're talking about because one in the marina houses are built on loose soil so they're a, a 10 to 11 that's a pretty high score but in other areas where their houses are built a little nicer and they're not as together it was only a six or seven so that's a little bit of a difference so how could you summarize the difference between the seismograph and the two scales what do you guys think all right if you're stuck 
the best thing to do is to always go and look back. So let's go look back. They're really wanting us to focus on the seismograph right here. So if we notice, it's an instrument that they use to measure the earthquake shock. It records their data to a computer and they're able to detect a tiny earth tremor thousands of miles away. So the big difference is when are they using this device? Yeah, they're using it before or kind of as the earthquake's starting, right? But when are the scales used? When are they using those? Yeah, those are used afterwards. They're using those to figure out how much damage did the earthquake cause and how much energy is it releasing. So those are the big differences when they use which one and why they're using it too. So your job today for your reading response is during the October 1989 earthquake in San Francisco, why was the damage greater in the Marina District than in the other parts of the city? I kind of talked about it a little bit, but I want you to dig deeper. Cite evidence from the text to support your answer. So you're gonna go back on this page and figure out why was it a 10 to 11 in the Marina District and only a six to a seven in other parts of the city? What was the cause? Thank you so much for coming today, fourth graders. You did an amazing job. See you next time.